Welcome everyone, Matt Kluskowski here, and in another video that I did, I had listed some tips for the shift key in Photoshop, things that a lot of people don't know that using the shift key can alter the way a tool or uh, a technique can work. I thought I'd do something similar here inside of Lightroom, this, time, this way I'm gonna do it with the Alt Option key. So on a Mac, it would be the Option key is generally what your keyboard is gonna say, and on a PC, it will generally say the Alt key. So they both do the same thing, they just are called something a little bit different. Okay, let's dive in. We'll go over here into the Basic panel. I think one of my favorite things that I, I, I use quite often would be I'll make some adjustments to a photo, open up shadows, maybe pull back highlights, add some contrast, whites, blacks, you know, et cetera, different things. And then there are times where, you know, I might want to go in here and make some texture or clarity and color changes as well and go all throughout the panels and do the same thing. Well, what will happen is, is I can reset everything to just hit the reset button and that'll reset all of the sliders back to zero. But sometimes I don't want them all reset. Maybe I just want to keep all the tone stuff that I did. Maybe I just want to reset everything here in presence. And that's when you can hold down your option or alt key and click on reset. And it'll open, it'll show you a little preview for each little area, if you will. Okay, so you'll see it at the top. If you're ever wondering where it works, just hold it down and you'll see those settings change to where you can reset just your presence settings, but leave everything else the same. Another thing while we're at it, and you'll see it the most here inside of the uh, the tone area, is it will show you clipping. It will show you shadow or highlight clipping. So when I hold down my, my whites, I click on whites. If I press and hold down on the Alt Option key and I start dragging this, I'll start to see clipping in the white areas. So everything's black. As I move it, I'll start to see clipping. Everything is black or in the blacks, everything turns white and I move that and I'll start to see clipping areas. You will see it in shadows. You will see it when you do highlights. Uh, you won't see it when you do contrast. You will see it when you do things like exposure. And I believe you'll even see it with dehaze. So you can see shadow or highlight clipping that way. Along the same lines as that. So tip number three would be the option alt key also works in some other panels, one of them being the detail panel. So if you're sharpening, whenever you're adjusting a sharpening slider, it will give you a black and white preview of what's going on so that you can see it independent of the color. Not so, I don't find so useful with the amount slider, but I do find it useful with radius. Uh, I find it useful, very, very useful with detail as well. You can kind of see how crunchy things would get. And then the most useful of all of them would be masking. So masking will mask away from smooth areas, but it's hard to visualize that. So if you hold down Option or Alt, click on masking, everything starts out as white, which means sharpening is being applied everywhere. As you hold down Option or Alt and drag it to the right, the black areas means that that Lightroom is hiding the sharpening from those areas, and that's a really good way to visualize it. Tip number four, you can use the Option Alt key when you're doing split toning. So if you don't wanna have to go in here and set your saturation to a level that you can see, a very quick way to preview what your split toning colors could be would be hold down your Option or Alt slider and then just drag the Hue slider, okay? And what it does is it essentially, it, hot, it, it sets the saturation to 100% without you going in here and setting it to 100% and then dragging that to figure out what color you want. You just hold down option or alt. It sets the saturation temporarily to 100% so you can settle on the color tint that you want to use here. And then you can go down and start, you know, incrementally adding saturation. Generally, you would never do it at 100%. So same thing works on the shadows as well just a temporary way to set it to 100%. And then when you release, you st you're stuck on your color, you can just gradually add some saturation there. And our last little option alt tip here, and there's plenty of them, but we'll stop uh, at number five. Our last little option alt tip here would be if we're using the brush tool, whenever we brush something on, so I'll just brush exposure on, and you can see it's brightening the photo. If you hold down the option or alt key, it automatically switches to the subtraction or eraser version of the brush. You'll even see it, it's got a little minus in the middle of it. And that lets me go in here and start to erase any of the areas that I brushed on. 
And when you're done brushing, you can just hit zero or click on done. I'm going to go down here and reset that. So I am not stuck on that one as well. And while we're at it, why not just continue? I, as, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking of more tips. So I'll just give them to you. Uh, another one would be is if you hold down option or alt, you will see a set default button down here. This is only, you're only going to see this in the develop module. You'll see set default down here. And what that does is if you click on it, it will set whatever these settings that you have here for these photos, it will set, it'll even tell you, change the default settings used by Lightroom for the negative files, which is basically your raw files with the following properties, JPEG, Sony, this, and, uh, and it will set every photo that comes in to use those default settings. So I caution against this one because a lot of times I have to troubleshoot for people that forget that they turned it on and can't figure out why Lightroom is setting default settings, but just understand that it's there if you ever wondered why it was there. And then if you ever set your settings for one photo, and then you shift click down here in the film strip. Now I've got multiple photos selected you may know that the sync button appears, meaning that you can synchronize the settings that we're doing on this photo to all the other selected photos down here in the film strip. If I click on sync, it's going to pop open a dialog box that asks me what I sync. And that may be fine for the first time that you do it. But if you find you're doing this over and over and over again in a shoot and you're leaving the same tech check boxes turned on or off, if you hold down option or alt, you'll see it goes from sync dot 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 to just sync, which means that it's just going to use the settings that you had that were the, the settings that were checked in the checkbox. It's going to use them. It's not going to show you anything. It's not going to pop open a dialog box. It's just going to go through and sync those photos or the ones that you have selected down here for you without showing you the dialog box. So that is seven instead of five, but I'm going to stop there. I'm sure there are so many more and that'll just be perfect information for another video in the future. And finally, I just wanted to take one quick moment to pay the bills and point you to mattk.com slash preset hyphen system. Uh, this is my photography preset system is my new release in the last couple of months here. And um, it works. It's a preset system that actually works for both Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, it's got a bunch of different preset packs that are inside of it. You can always find out more over here on the website and uh, they are on sale right now. So swing by and check it out.